We tried the Apple Vision Pro. Jake and I have been VR enthusiasts for years, so we have a bunch of thoughts on this new trajectory that VR and AR experiences are going. Let's get into this. So for those of you that don't know, Jake and I are both broke. So how are Jake and I gonna try the Vision Pro? Well, what we did was we booked a demo on Apple's website and went and did the demo. The demo experience was pretty smooth overall, with the only hiccup being a little bit of trouble with glasses that in reality was mainly my fault. After that, the Apple Store rep that was assigned to us, shout out to you, you know who you are, she showed us all the features of the headset and how to use it. The experience was definitely a scripted. It was definitely a scripted experience. The guy said stuff like, you know, you're still connected to the people around you while using the Vision Pro. Stuff like that when he displayed certain aspects, like how people would fade in even when you're fully, like, supposed to be toned out of the world. Overall, I would say, uh, the guy was very nice, definitely. He was a- oh my The guy was extremely nice, though. He walked me through the whole process and was very kind and patient, especially when we asked stuff like, hey, can we record? And although we couldn't record the experience, uh, he was very nice and kind about it, and very respectful throughout the time. Can I first say that I just loved the UI sounds? Like, these sounds were probably some of the best that I've ever heard in UI before. I know it seems like a small tidbit, but in an experience that's supposed to be immersive like this, bad UI sounds can really break your immersion, and these definitely did the exact opposite of break my immersion. The UI sounds felt reminiscent of the UI sounds of the meta quests, while being very different and just incredibly immersive. The setup for tracking was very simple. You hold out your hands first, and then you look at some dots. That's basically it. The hand tracking was flawless for me. It never stuttered or messed up at all. Uh, it was awesome to see stuff, just look at something, it pop up a little bit, and then you can do this. I was able to put my, I would say, I was able to put like my hand all the way down really low and click it, and it worked fine. However, Jake's dad, who also did the demo, did have some problems with hand tracking, but again, Jake and I never experienced any problems, so your results may vary. While looking everywhere to select things did seem pretty simple and intuitive, if I was a power user of the Vision Pro, I might be a little annoyed at not being able to intuitively know where something is and not being able to look away and still select it. But that could be something that Apple could just fix in a future update, where they gave you the option to point and select with your hands rather than using your eyes as a cursor. Now, I will say, the camera look almost lifelike. It did a very good job of integrating the real and digital world incredibly well. Because of the clarity, you can't really tell, at least in my, like, what, 15, 20 minutes of using it, I couldn't really tell that I was looking through a screen. In the environment that I was for the demo, there was a tiny bit of noise, especially when I looked to my side, but I have no doubt that being somewhere, like, outside or just in a brighter room would have completely negated that. Part of the demo, well, most of the demo, was looking through photos and vis videos to see what those can do on the Vision Pro. The immersive photos and videos were just great. The 3D photos and videos you could take, which were cool, but in my dad's words, kind of like being like a ghost. It was weird, and I kind of felt odd being spat on by a kid blowing out a birthday cake. But while they were great, it's not something that I couldn't live without. It's just a nice bonus to be able to capture that depth in, on the Vision Pro. I did especially like how in immersive mode, photos and videos that weren't shot on the Vision Pro but were shot on an iPhone didn't have a solid outline for a border but kind of blended and morphed into the space around me. That was a really nice feature and it was it was incredibly immersive. And I guess the whole point of this headset and Apple's strive towards VR in general is about immersion. And Apple definitely considered this when they were making their headset. Everything from the shadows of the windows being projected onto the surfaces around you to still being able to see your hands when in an environment just created a whole new level of immersion that I haven't experienced in any other VR headset thus far. It is truly magical. Now, while this level of immersion was great, there was one thing that was just completely breaking the immersion for me, and that is the weight of the headset. The one or two major flaws I'd say it had would definitely be that it was very front heavy. The weight of the headset 
on my face was just extremely uncomfortable. Wearing the headset for as little as 20 minutes significantly hurt my face. And if it weren't for that in the battery, I think this headset would basically be perfect. The FOV was another one. Um, it is very small and to the point of where like I would struggle to focus on stuff because it's kind of like trying to focus on your nose because something would be like like in directly in the middle of me. And I would kind of like, if I looked too much in the middle of something, I felt like I would start like not be able to see it a little bit, which is weird. It's weird to do that in a VR headset where the FOV is that kind of small. And that could just be the eye tracking wasn't perfect. The eye distance wasn't perfect. I, maybe I am weird. <laughs> a number of things. That's something I will say that I noticed is that I somehow would have trouble like focusing on certain stuff and it was a little weird. Hopefully future generations can do a little better job of this and I have no doubt that they will. And that's really what you need to consider when talking about this product. We shouldn't be hyped for this specific generation of the headset, but what the future holds for the next couple of generations for this headset. It's about to get real. I mean, in future generations, issues like the battery, the price tag, and the weight can all be addressed as technology progresses. I give this thing about three years before it becomes a viable option for just a normal person. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, then make sure you smash that like button. And if you really liked it, then you should consider subscribing. If you want to help support us on our future projects financially, like this one, then you can use the link in the description below to tip us. Tipping any amount is deeply appreciated, and you also get your name in a video. Here are all the people that have donated in the last month. If you want to see new videos from us in the future, then make sure you hit that notification bell. But while you're waiting, why don't you go check out our AirPods Pro 2 with USB-C review. Pretty interesting video, and Jake had some really interesting things to say. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Uh, would I buy it? No. No, I would have to have three and a half grand of just disposable income that is nothing to me to buy it. But three and a half grand! For some reason, Ghost Room decides to put this in as the outro. Wink, 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 wink. My winking looks like I'm twitching my eye. That's... We'll see. People will see. I just... Never mind. Don't put this as the outro, please. Subscribe! That was awful. That was a nightmare.